Welcome to the last day of the Powergen Europe and Renewable Energy World Europe 2015 and what great events they've been. In the next few minutes we'll review this year's show and take a final tour of the show floor. I'm Kelvin Ross, please stay tuned. Over the last three days we've had a hard-hitting and frank keynote session, a joint plenary panel discussion where challenges were honestly explored and where the need for change was recognised as a fundamental issue. And of course, we can't forget our highly regarded conference tracks. Many who attended were left with much to consider. On the exhibition floor, several key announcements were made, deals were signed, alliances were formed, and many innovative technologies and solutions demonstrated. Let's now head over there for the last time this year to catch up on news, innovations and technologies shown. The new products we have on display here is uh the OP16 gas turbine. Uh, it's uh, not really a new product as such. It has been on the market for 10 years, but we have been launching several improvement uh, programs, uh, particularly in the combustion area on this uh, machines. So the new development program on the combustion side enables us to run on very low quality fuels, uh, both in terms of the uh, calorific value, so we can run on very low calorific value fuels, less than uh, 10 megajoules per kilogram, and we're also able to handle very dirty fuels, so we have a very high tolerance for contaminants in, in the fuel. Our product is an innovating um, solution to reduce the contact surface and uh, to reduce the losses in the high current power industry. The concept is that it's a metal foam, uh, which is getting into the uh, electrical contact, so that it's going through the oxide thickness. And uh, the, the oxide thickness on the electrical contact has the highest resistance. And this foam which is going through the, the, this thickness is making this resistance very, very uh, uh, low. So to avoid any problem of destroying the material uh, because of the hot spots, it was here uh, the ideal solution. So just by putting the material, we went down from 150 degrees uh, to 50 degrees. We do condition-based maintenance, and in order to do condition-based maintenance, we need to know the condition of the equipment we are looking at. So that means we need condition monitoring. And uh, for that purpose, we have developed uh, tools, sensors, strategies uh, to be integrated in the machinery to give an early warning to the customer, to uh, state the condition of the machine, which is again a basis for pinpointed repair, postponing of maintenance, which can also be a, a very interesting, financially interesting thing. And uh, the tools range from uh, wireless sensors, which we use on pumps, motors, fans, uh, in order to determine the uh, vibration state of these machines. In order to make that even more cost efficient to our customer, uh, we do that from remote. So we have developed a cloud application so that all the data can be transmitted to the cloud. We have a good offering to our customer uh, on a global scale. My technology is that the, it's a high frequency measuring system for, that for the first time is able to measure biomass just before it is processed. So not in a laboratory, but in, in a real-time measurement. The, the common known systems uh, are all very slow. And the advantage of our system is that we have the direct result while working with the material, you still are able to adjust your process. And if you put the material, if you take samples and take them to a laboratory, you only will have results once you cannot change anything. The impact of this technology will be very great because it's impossible to process biomass in a good way if you cannot measure it. And more and more, there is more demand for biomass, so the, the price goes up and the quality goes down. And if you want to be able to handle that low quality biomass, with much more variation than the high end biomass, then you have to measure. So people cannot do without this. And that is why we're here to tell that. I'm here today at the Power Gen in Amsterdam presenting a paper about predictive maintenance in the power industry. Predictive maintenance 
It's a new concept also in the power industry. It's all about predicting the optimal maintenance time before actually a failure occurs. And this uh, truly adds value to the power industry, I would say threefold. Most important point is of course, it reduces uh, the maintenance cost uh, dramatically. And of course, this is very important in the current uh, market environment. Uh, secondly, it has also implications for the end users because the downtime in the industry and for the households uh, is of course prevented, which in effect um, increases um, uh, the customer's uh, satisfaction. We met with Dr. Heather Johnston, the event director, to get a perspective of this year's events. I think what's really struck me at this, at this year's show is the difference uh, from when we were last in Amsterdam back in 2010. Um, the the um, power market in, in Europe has, at, has it's profoundly changed in that five year period. And what we've really seen this year is, is that change um, expressed fully, whether it's on the exhibition floor or in the conference. Um, nobody's disputing the fact that the, the companies who are working in the European power market are not under pressure, are not facing severe challenges. <laughs> what, what has really come out loud and clear is the fact that the industry has sort of stopped looking backwards. They're really looking forward. They're like saying, well, this is where our industry is and what do I need to do whether it's to, through technology developments or new business models, what do I need to do to make my business viable here? This is then translated into a, a sort of feeling across the last three days of, of, I don't mean to be dramatic, but hope. There is hope here. Maria van der Hoven, um, who's the outgoing executive director of the International Energy Agency, um, said at her keynote address this, this year, I mean, we are in the throes of the low carbon transition and, you know, it, there's no way back. We cannot go back. And I think that's really um, been translated at this year's show that the companies um, are now really looking forward. They're no longer looking back and they're exploring other avenues to, whether it's through technology or through do, new, new business models that will ensure their viability in the European market going forward. Our attendance this year is just shy of 10,000. Um, obviously uh, that figure is a little bit down on previous years, but in the context of current market conditions, I mean, Penwell is absolutely delighted with that, that um, attendance figure um, and really I just want to say a huge thank you to all our investors in our, our show. We really appreciate that they continue to come along and we very much hope that they've had a great show. Certainly when I've gone and walked around the, the um, exhibition floor, I've, I've heard some great things. I know some people might not believe me but no, there seems to have been some really good business done and that's wonderful to hear. Thank you, Heather. The knowledge and experiences that are shared every year are central to every PowerGen and Renewable Energy World event. Delegates have had the opportunity to gain new knowledge and insights from the many conference papers presented. Those were the result of hard work, dedication and countless hours of research and study. In celebration of the best of those, let's head to the Best Paper Award Ceremony and share some of the joy of the winners. We know that many will be inspired to be even better next year. We introduced the subject of uh, fault ride through and the technical aspects. So from the theoretical point of view, uh, what happens when there's a fault on the network and it's not possible to take any electrical power away from the machine but the mechanical power still comes into the machine and the rotor accelerates. So, so we looked at that and uh, the fact that after the fault is cleared it's then uh, a machine that is no longer in synchronism. So then taking that and looking at what the different grid codes are doing around the world but particularly in Europe we looked at uh, at um, France and Germany, Sweden and Finland and with our customers participation too and I should mention uh, uh, Gotia Power in Sweden and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, Centrex in the UK uh, were uh, co-authors with me on this so thank you very much to them 
also for their collaboration. Well, I'm delighted and uh, yeah, um, not won one of these before, so I'm very, very proud. The paper was a case study about power system reserves in Turkey, which, which we believe is something very important right now uh, following the large blackouts uh, recently in Turkey. And the uh, paper was twofold. First of all, we were looking into to primary and secondary frequency control, something that Wärtsil has a long history of in Turkey, close cooperation with the TSO, TEYESH. And second, we did a case study of the potential value of, of introducing and, and allowing non-spinning secondary reserves in the Turkish grid code. Well, it's really a great honor. I feel really good about it. And, and winning it in the, uh, gas, the track for gas fire generation, the flexing power of gas, it's truly really a great honor. There are a lot of great papers in that track and it feels really good. Many thanks for watching. Although the event has ended, the conversation has not. Let's continue that conversation on the hashtag shown on your screen. We hope to see you again next year in Milan, Italy for PowerGen Europe 2016. Until then, Arrivederci.